It's time for your Low Country Real Estate Market Update. It's the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show. Brian is one of the top 1% real estate agents in Charleston. Find him online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-400-8009. Now, broadcasting from the WTMA studios, here's your host, Brian Beatty. Good morning, Charleston, and welcome to another edition of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on The Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. I'm your host, Brian Beatty. Thanks so much for joining me this morning as we talk about what's happening in the world of real estate, what's happening in Charleston, South Carolina. If you've been on this program before or listened to it, then you know that uh, I'm the type of agent that doesn't really pull any punches on what's happening in the market. I've never been one to really beat around the bush. And so for the past decade almost, I've been on this program helping you better understand uh, the ins and outs of the market. What's happening nationally, regionally, locally? What, is, what does that mean for us here in Charleston, South Carolina? And what do you need to know about the process of buying, selling, or investing in real estate so you're an informed consumer? One of the ways I do that is by helping to kind of peel back the curtain on the industry and help you understand how agents operate so that you are uh, an informed consumer. You have all the right information. So here's what we're going to talk about over the course of the next hour. I've got uh, kind of a bit of an interesting show plan. We're going to talk about what's happening in the market. You know, there's... I wish I could say things were getting better, (laughs) but if you're a buyer, unfortunately, they're not. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, what that means, though. There's some uh, some industry experts, so to speak, that are altering their opinion on what this year in real estate is going to look like on a national scale. And then, of course, you kind of just take that and put it on steroids because everyone's moving to Charleston. So we're going to talk about the impact uh, of the market here locally based on what's happening nationally and regionally. I want to talk about new construction because a lot of folks are obviously struggled right now with finding homes that fit their needs. And so they're saying, all right, well, if we can't find it, if we can't buy it, we'll build it. So there are some things that you really need to understand when it comes to new construction homes, whether you're going with a builder, whether you're building it on your own with the help of a custom builder, uh, really some things that you need to understand. And then I want to talk about investment properties. A lot of people out there want to be investors uh, there are a lot of people that say they're investors. They're really more professional lookers because <laughs> they don't ever buy anything. Uh, but education is important. So I want to talk about the investment side of this business. It's something I have a lot of experience in. I want to help you understand kind of my journey and what others typically go through when they start investing. And then a few different things that you should be mindful of if you're a seasoned investor or if you just want to become one. And then kind of in tandem with that is property management, right? Securing a cash flowing property. Uh, how do we do that? How do we find it? How do we analyze it? How do we protect that cash flow? So uh, that's what I've got planned over the course of the next hour. Now, if you want to reach out to me, uh, you want to have a conversation about real estate, you're thinking of buying, selling, investing. Maybe you think about becoming a real estate agent. I have a you know, team of almost 20 folks. Uh, we've been in the top 1% of agents here since 2009. We've done well over a, a thousand transactions, about a billion dollars in real estate volume. So if you're thinking of getting into the business, uh, or you'd like to discuss doing business, the phone number to reach me is 843-400-8009. That's 843-400-8009. Or you can check us out online, listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. More information on my team and who we are, what we do, what we sell, how we sell it. You can find out how many buyers we have for your home right now and what your home might be worth if you're considering selling it. Uh, we might even have a buyer for you right now. In fact, the odds are fairly high that we actually do. There's a lot of demand out there. So uh, listingsincharleston.com is the website. So let's, let's, let's get right into it. You know, I I just mentioned a few minutes ago that it's really, it's not getting any better. (laughs) And the reality is inventory, uh, existing inventory just continues to, to go down. Now heading into this year, let's take a step back for a second. There was this wide consensus uh, just among experts in the field real estate firms, agencies, reporting agencies, economists, so on and so forth, that the uh, rate of home price growth, which by the way, that peaked at about 20% uh, in August of last year, that that rate would kind of slowly decline. We would have a steady deceleration this year uh, as some normalcy kind of began to return to the housing market. That obviously has been booming ever since the, the pandemic. But We've got some folks that are kind of changing their tune on that. And quite frankly, uh, we have to remain up to date with the market. And so my my perception of what's going to happen this year 
uh, has changed a little bit as well. You know, we've had two solid months so far of, you know, just activity in the market and we are not slowing down, not even close. But listen, so back in November, back in December, uh, Zillow had said that the 12 month rate of home price growth would decelerate to 11% by the end of the year. So we're, you know, prices are going to be up 11%. Then in January, they said, actually, you know, it's going to be more like 16.4%. Well, then just a little bit ago, they said, actually, you know what, we're going to, we're going to bump that up a little bit more. Uh, you know, we expect home price growth to peak at around 21.6% in May. And the year kind of on average will be at about a 17.3% increase in pricing. In other words, instead of the deceleration that we've kind of been told and, and told to expect and to an extent we've been preparing for, I'm not so sure that that's going to happen. Now, that's just that's one person or one entity's opinion. And, and, and of course, what's causing that? Well, it's the fact that we've got this incredible amount of demand in this market. If you look at the inventory, especially here locally, I mean, I did this on the show uh, last week where I was talking about the fact that we're, you know, we're putting plenty of homes on the market. I mean, we're putting almost 2,000 homes a month on the market. It's just that we're selling more than we're putting on. So that's why you're seeing the inventory numbers go down and down and down. And it's been, you know, that has been center stage on, on headlines for years now is just this issue with inventory steadily declining. Um, so if you look at the year over year rate of home price growth, it, let's say that that hits 21.6% in May, like Zillow is suggesting, even though that there are, um, you know, other, other entities that are saying other things. We'll get to that in a minute. It would almost be more than five times greater than the average annual rate, which is around 4%. It's 4.2%. So that would be the highest jump that we have seen in pricing uh, since they've basically been recording data in, in since the 80s. So obviously not everybody agrees with Zillow. You know, over the over the coming 12 months, somebody like CoreLogic um, foresees home prices climbing just 3.5%. Well, that's a huge swing in opinion. We've got Fannie Mae saying 7.6% this year. Yeah, there's so there's there's a lot of differentiation here in terms of what's going to happen in this market. Now, here's kind of where I step in as somebody that sells real estate as a high level in our market in Charleston. Folks are moving here; they're continuing to move here. It's like it's, I've said this multiple times on this program, but we are this shining beacon on the map for folks to to move to. We're like a lighthouse uh, that a boat sees as they're traversing water in the middle of the night. We, uh, we, there are so many people that are moving here, uh, folks from the West Coast, for, folks from Northeast. I mean, we've they're coming from everywhere. I mean, I just sold a home uh, three months ago from from a folk from uh, Germany, so they're coming from all over the place. Now, what will be interesting to watch is what happens with interest rates. You know, we had this big spike in interest rates; they basically went up a full point, uh, and that really slowed some people down. Uh, and and you know, so, why is there so much uncertainty when it comes to price growth? Well, I think it really does boil down to mortgage rates being one of the big factors, which are you know beginning to, you know, they're, they're already spiking now that the Federal Reserve rate hikes look basically all but certain at this point. And so, you know, in December, we were looking at an average rate of around 3.1% for like a, a typical conventional 30-year fixed uh, mortgage. Now we're at over... Four percent. They did dip down a little bit. Now they've dipped back up, and so as rates rise, you know, it, it could let some steam out from from the market because ultimately, what will happen is the higher the payment plus the increase in the appreciation we've seen for property values, some buyers are just going to be straight up priced out of the market, and that's that's just the reality. When you couple that with inflation and the fact that just everything costs more money right now. And the fact that wages are not consistently growing at the rate by which things cost, then we've got a problem. So there's there's a bunch of sidelined home buyers that just can't compete in this market right now. And I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. The reality, though, is that even if some of them are priced out by rates, there's there are going to be others that kind of replace them, especially those that move from different markets that have a differing opinion of value when it comes to real estate. 
I mean, if you're moving from parts of California, a million bucks gets you like a two bed, one bath house that needs a full renovation. So it's all a matter of, of, of perspective, right? Perspective on, a, on, on value. Um, the key, obviously, for you, if you're a buyer right now, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, but the key for you as a buyer is to first and foremost understand that you're more than likely going to be in a multiple offer situation. So before you get to that point, you have to be prepared. You have to have a lender that's on call that can write a pre-approval letter with that address, with the offer amount on it. You have to make a strong offer. There are plenty of instances in which you as a buyer aren't going to get a second chance. You know, let's say you make an offer and then six hours later, another buyer makes an offer. Well, if it's good enough, nothing's stopping that seller from just taking that offer and running with it. So you want to be making strong, competitive offers in this market. It's all situational. Let's say that we've come across a home that's been on the market for a few months. Well, then you've got a little leeway, right? Then you can play the game a little bit. You can negotiate more heavily. But for the properties that hit the market that are in good condition, that are priced well, that are marketed well, that are in attractive locations, you you know they're going to sell quickly. I mean, think there are so many stories out there of buyers that are, they pull up to a house for a showing with their agent and they've got to wait outside because there are like four or five people ahead of them. So, uh, you know, we talked last show about how to prepare in a market like this if you're a buyer. And so if you if you didn't catch that, then I'd encourage you to go to listingsincharleston.com uh, because we put all of our previous shows on there. We've got hundreds of videos on YouTube with all kinds of information about the real estate process, things that you should know if you're going to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. So listingsincharleston.com is the website. And of course, you can always call me if you have questions, concerns. Maybe you just need some help. Maybe you need a a good contractor or an HVAC guy, or you want to build a fence, whatever the case might be, uh, I'm here as a resource for you. So feel free to call me or text me at 843-400-8009. That's 843-400-8009. So here's where I want to shift from here. Like as an example, I did a, I did a search today for just a four bedroom house in Mount Pleasant, North or South Mount Pleasant, right? All of Mount Pleasant. Wando, Cane Hoy, and Daniel Island between six hundred and fifty thousand and eight hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. You would typically expect that there's quite a few options, right? That's a pretty popular price range in Mount Pleasant. You might be for sale four. <laughs> it's incredible. So what a lot of people are doing is they're saying, well, if I can't buy a resale, then I'll just build something. I'll go to a builder and I'll just have them build what I want. I can control the process. I can control the time frame. I'll have plenty of time. I don't have to rush into a decision. Well, there's some things you need to know about new construction. I'm going to start with a story that's a little unsettling right when we come back. So stick around. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show right here on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. More stimulating talk on real estate matters with Brian Beatty next on 1250 WTMA. 1250 WTMA. Now, the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues on Charleston's Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Welcome back, folks, as the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues right here on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. I'm, of course, your host, Brian Beatty, and thanks so much again for joining us this morning as we talk about the housing market, what all is going on out there, trying to make sense of it all in a, in a very crazy, very fast-paced market. And so... Some buyers out there are opting to kind of slow things down a little bit. Rather than go and compete for a resale, they're saying, you know what? I'm just going to go and build. I'm going to go to a builder and I'm going to build what I want. I can control the time frame. I can control the process. I know the upgrades that I want. Um, you know, it'll take me six months or so, plus or minus, depending upon the builder and community and price point, of course. Um, but I'm just going to go the new construction route. It's easier. Well, there's some things that you need to know about new construction. And so, uh, I'm going to spell that out here over the course of the next 10 minutes or so. But if you have questions about new construction, things that I do not cover, please, please, please reach out to me. It doesn't cost you anything to have a buyer agent represent you in new construction. Frankly, you need one. Okay. Now, I can be reached by call or text. The number is 843 400 8009. That's 843 400 8009. Or check us out online, listingsincharleston.com. We have plenty of new construction homes on our website. You can learn more about our team and uh, myself, and there's a bunch of great stuff on that site. So listingsincharleston.com. So I want to start out with uh, with a story. There was a family in the news uh, about a month ago out of Florida. They had a new construction home that was under contract. They, um, they needed the extra space. 
um, so that they could hire some in-home care for their disabled son. And so about five months go by. They're, they're five months into the process. And a few weeks before closing, the builder calls them. And the builder says, hey, you know, um, hate to have to do this, but, you know, due to the increases that uh, they're experiencing in labor costs and materials costs, and of course, the equity that has been built in the property over the course of the past five months, they're going to have to cancel the contract unless the buyer can come up with 60% of the equity gain they experienced since it went under contract roughly half a year ago. And so the buyer's like, well, I mean, how much has the home appreciated since we put it under contract? And the builder said, well, it's, you know, your same model, same upgrades are selling for about $65,000 more. So we need $40,000 from you in order to proceed. Otherwise, we'll, you know, we'll need to cancel your contract and just move on to another buyer. Well, the buyer didn't have the ability to afford the additional cost. And they ultimately weren't able to buy the house. Uh, They just spent over half a year building, going to meetings, making design choices, planning a move, so on and so forth. And it's a very sad story. It's it's heartbreaking, quite frankly. But this isn't just some random story that I picked um, that made national news because of the rarity of the story. The reality is this is happening all over the country. And it's happening even here in Charleston. So I want you to I want you to think through some things. I want some there there will be some things for you to keep in mind if you are uh, interested in new construction. And the first one is very simple, uh, and that is that you you don't get a discount for not using a buyer agent, right? There's there's no cost associated, and there's no financial benefit that you would receive for not having a real estate agent. It's not like you can say, well, hey, you're only uh, getting half the commission, so can I shave that off the purchase price, which is like an old school investor tactic. It's not the case. So uh, remember that the builder's agent is just that. They're an agent for the builder. I mean, they can help you facilitate the transaction, but they're not there to advocate for you. That There's a big difference there. And so the here are some things that you really need to understand when it comes to new construction. And I've done a lot of new construction. Um, every builder is different. Every situation is just a little bit different. A lot of these builders have different contracts. You know, typically when you're buying or selling a home between a, just a, a buyer and a seller, um, there's a standardized South Carolina contract that is used. Agents are Uh, trained on them. They understand them, the impact of them, how to change them, modify them to accommodate a specific situation or term to the agreement. But when it comes to builders, they write their own contracts. And the things that you might find in those contracts are somewhat troublesome, potentially very troublesome. They can talk about your inspection rights, deadlines, uh, additional costs that you might not regularly incur. Like some builders ask you to pay deed stamps, which is traditionally a seller expense. And just so we're clear, deed stamps are the equivalent of $3.70 for every $1,000 the house is worth. So for every $100,000 that property is that you're buying, you've got $370 in deed stamps or transfer taxes. So just do the math there. That's a big chunk of money. And so what these contracts now have, which are scary and kind of in tune with that story that I just told you, are things like an escalation clause or a duration clause. Now, the escalation clause could say something to the effect of, uh, you know, if there is a change in the market at any given point in time, the builder has the right to renegotiate the sales price. And and just so we're clear, that never means that the price is going to go down. It means it can only go up especially in a market like this, when we're seeing big appreciation percentages in multiple areas of the market and basically all areas of the market. There's not one market that's um, not necessarily appreciating in value. It's, it's a rising tide that lifts all boats. And so that's what happened to this family out of Florida. There was an escalation clause in their agreement. I don't know the details as to whether they were working with an agent personally or not, but that's one of our roles is to read through that contract, have an attorney read through that contract and say, hey, what, are, what do we need to know here? What do we need to be aware of? Is there any language in here that's concerning to you? Now, I've read through I got hundreds of them at this point, and I, can, I know where to look for the things that they sometimes 
neglect to mention. Um, and and I don't mean that to say that you know site agents or builders agents are uh, untrustworthy uh, and don't have integrity. What I am saying though is that because of the fast paced nature of this environment, if you go into a community, you have very few questions. You're an easy sale. Here, sign here, press here, six copies, you're done. You need to be asking the right questions. You need to look through these documents and make sure that you really understand what you're getting yourself into. Another one is a duration clause that says, hey, you know what, if we run into some sort of issues that are outside of our control, uh, if if the construction doesn't start within X amount of time, then we can cancel the contract or uh, because of the increase in values, we can renegotiate the price. I mean, that's kind of scary stuff to be locked into a property that you're excited about making design choices about and you know, you're planning your move, you're making real logistical plans to move into a new house only for them to call and say, hey, you got an extra 50 grand because we need it if you want to keep the house. If not, so sorry, find another one. I mean, that's essentially what a escalation clause is for a builder. There's another issue here and that's, you know, and so many builders and contracts has, have, been, have been plagued with this uh, really since the start of the pandemic and that's the quality of craftsmanship due to a lack of skilled labor or overworked crews. And so there are some builders, I'm not going to name any names, but there are some builders that are pretty uh, notorious for doing shoddy finish work. And some of them even have in their contracts that you as a buyer can't delay closing for punch list, air quote, items. Case in point, we had a new construction um, home that we helped a buyer purchase, build, and uh, in their contract that says, hey, you can't hold up a, a, you can't delay closing because we haven't, you know, fixed every tiny little nail pop or little paint scuff. And I understand why they have that in the contract. Some people can be overbearing, really on both sides. But um, in this particular example, there was a laundry list of things that needed to be done before closing, at least in the eyes of myself and the buyer. And the builder said, look, you know, the reality is these are punch list related items. I've got a crew that's going to be over here tomorrow to finish all this stuff off. But closing is today. Let's get this closed. I'll get everybody, you know, over there tomorrow to finish everything up. You're not moving in until the weekend. Everything's fine. Well, guess what happened? Yeah, you guessed it. It took them almost half a year to finish that little punch list. Now, you've got some other little things that builders do, things you should be aware of. And that's as it relates to warranty issues. You know, there are a lot of warranty departments that are not run well. They've got clunky processes. Their repair work isn't great or it takes forever to get completed. And, you know, some will only come out to the house once in the first 12 months of home ownership. And they'll say that in the in the warranty uh, portion of the contract that, hey, you get basically one call. So just save up, you know, all those things that need to be fixed. Just make a list, put everything on there. And then right before your 12 months is up, Submit an order online, detail everything that's wrong, and we'll come out and we'll fix it. Well, that basically just means that, first of all, you're hoping that those things are are actually done and they're done well within your warranty deadline. And then on top of that, you you still got to live through those issues, right? It's If you've got two separate issues that you want to have fixed and you're only a few months in and you make your call within that 12 months, then you're done. You don't get a second shot at it. It's incredibly frustrating. I'd say and one more thing, just uh, while I'm thinking through some of these benefits and working with a real estate agent, aside from the fact that, you know, we are here to make sure that you and your best interests are protected, right? That means sometimes that we have to put on the, the hat of being, uh, you know, a jerk or whatever it is in order to get the deal done in order for them to get to listen. Because the last thing we want is for a buyer building a home to get pushed around or to not ask the question for fear of hearing a no. So we'll help make sure that everything remains on track. The last thing I want to mention is that when you're going and you're getting really excited about all these upgrades that you can add to your house, the we have to take resale value into account. A lot of these builders are making 100% or more profit margin on the upgrades they're installing in your home. It doesn't make sense for you to have the builder do that. Let us get some of our crew in there and we'll do it at a better cost. Now, of course, they've got economies of scale with regard to the um, materials that they purchase. But when you really do a side-by-side comparison, there are several areas of a home that are being built new that I could finish after the fact for less money than it would cost for you to just add it on to to an upgrade. 
Now, the only benefit to you as a buyer in adding that upgrade is that it gets incorporated into your loan, right? You get to spread that upgrade out over the course of 30 years for your mortgage instead of paying cash to do it. So there is a benefit to doing that. That being said, there are plenty of upgrades that just do not make sense financially. If you want our opinion on that, we're happy to offer that. But if there's no good time to tell a uh, a site agent or a builder's agent that you're working with an agent, my suggestion is just to do it as soon as you talk to them. Just say, hey, just so you know, I've got an agent. And then that way, if you find something you really like, they've at least been put on notice that another party to this transaction will be uh, involved. We'll look through the contract. We'll make sure that everything makes sense. We'll hold them accountable. Uh, we'll make sure that you're getting an inspection. Believe it or not, even though they're building a brand new home that has to pass code and inspections and so on and so forth, there are still several things that even a new construction home will show on a home inspection report, sometimes dozens of things. So it makes sense to do that in my opinion. So if you're thinking of building a new construction home, please consider using a buyer agent. It doesn't cost you anything. All it gets you is benefits. So if you want to reach out to me and talk more about that, my number is 843-400-8009. You can call or text that number, 843-400-8009. Or check us out online, listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or you can send me an email, brian at brianbeattyteam.com. Stick around for more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show right here on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Have a real estate question? Ask Brian Beatty. Send him an email, lowcountryhomesales at gmail.com. The Brian Beatty Real Estate Show is on 1250 WTMA. Expert news and views on the low country real estate scene. The Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on 1250 WTMA. Welcome back, folks, as the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues right here on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. I always like to take a, just a minute or two and, and just say how much I appreciate those of you that listen to this program. It's been almost a decade of me being on air here helping you better understand the real estate market and the process, you know, how real estate agents think and then how you can use that information to your advantage from a consumer perspective so that you can win in your next real estate transaction, whether that means taking a stab at timing the market or interviewing the right agent to really help you accomplish your real estate goals and everything in between, just remaining informed about the market. I just want to say thank you for for tuning in and listening and for for those of you that have listened for years, I love getting those phone calls from you guys. So if you ever need anything from me, anything real estate related, could be advice, could be a, a contact. Um, obviously, we, we deal with folks from all different walks of life. We've got a huge Rolodex of, wow, well, Rolodex, I haven't used that word in a long time. Uh, we've got a large uh, database, how about that, of folks that can help with, with anything real estate related. And of course, if you want to buy or sell or invest in real estate or become a real estate agent, then reach out to me personally. I'd love to help. 843-400-8009 is my cell. You can call or text 843-400-8009 or check us out online at listingsincharleston.com. So I want to talk about real estate investors. There's a lot of them out there right now. A lot of, well, I guess, let me put it this way. There are a lot of people that say they're investors or maybe they're just kind of dipping their toe in the water. They're, they're seeing whether or not investment real estate is right for them. Um, I've seen a lot of people that have done it the right way, and I've seen even more people that have done it the wrong way. So in a, in a market like this, when you want to get into real estate investing, maybe you've had uh, success and experience with investments. Uh, you guys know how valuable the partnership is between an investor and a real estate agent. But for those of you that don't know that, let me kind of walk you through this process a little bit. First of all, I've, you know, I've been selling real estate for 16 years over a thousand transactions, about a billion dollars in real estate volume. Um, a good number of those, hundreds of those have been real estate investments, either in representing investors or in doing it myself with my own money. And in addition to you know hosting this show and uh, running a real estate team, I also own a property management company. I also invest in real estate and I also provide capital to other investors uh, because I own a private money lending company. So I'm kind of in, in all areas of of real estate, uh, which I think maybe might be a, a qualifier for me to remain on this program. Uh, but anyways, first thing I want to mention is this. The pathway to success is not always a straight line. 
And what I mean by that could, I mean, it, that's a, an applicable statement in many different areas of life, but uh, it's especially applicable both in the form of the real estate agent that you hire to help you, whether it's buying, selling, or investing, but also you as an investor. You know, you're going to learn from mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. And, it, you know, especially if you're like flipping a house, there's high risk. We're talking big money sometimes. Now, it could be yours, it could be someone else's, but either way, the impact is the same. Potential for big losses. So we've got to be careful. Now, in partnering with a real estate agent that has also not only represented investors, but is an investor, it has spent their own money, has put their own money into the game, gambled with their own money, and won, that's the type of person that you want to align yourself with. There are a lot of gurus out there that will you know, sell you a system for $10,000. For whatever reason, it's always $10,000. That's just that's what it costs. Um, and it's, it, a lot of times, it's just one big giant packet of information for you to sift through. But there's very little direction. Look, guys, information is free. Content is free. You can easily self-educate yourself on real estate investing, listening to podcasts, reading books. I mean, there's, there's a plethora of information out there. And there's also a ton of options when it comes to what kind of investor you're going to be. Are you going to be the kind of investor that buys something and rents it out? You know, the get rich slow method. Are you going to flip properties, the get rich quick method with a lot more risk? You could find a property at a deep discount and then pass that opportunity off to another investor for profit. No risk. We call that wholesaling. You could do what I do, which is, hey, you know what? If, if you don't feel comfortable being the person that is flipping the property, maybe you're sitting on a bunch of cash and you want to lend that money out at really favorable rates to other investors with experience to do the work. You can either lend them the money and earn some points at closing plus the interest-only payments. You could maybe partner with them financially on the flip where they have very little invested, but they do all of the work and you take a percentage of the profits bunch of different ways to skin the cat. Maybe you want to get into, you know, uh, REITs, real estate investment trusts, which a real estate investment trust uh, is just a single investment into a diversified basket of real estate properties. It's, it's a, they're legally required by the way, to distribute 90% of all taxable income to investors on an annual basis. Um, they're very often diversified by, by property type and location and, you know, multiple categories. Um, and they've been kind of positively correlated with inflation or, or more multiple categories to kind of achieve uh, strategic objectives. So there's there's just a bunch of different ways that you can get into the real estate game. But an important element is the partnership with a real estate agent that understands the investment world, has gambled with their own money. It makes a huge difference because at the end of the day, we make financial decisions based off of expectations. Let's say, let's just use a common example. Let's say that we're going and we're flipping a house. Well, we can control what we can control, which is how much we can buy it for. But we have to begin with the end in mind. So that means what do we believe the market will bear for this property once it's renovated? As of right now, can we future cast that, that pricing a little bit? Can we look at appreciation levels in that area, in that market, in that neighborhood and say, well, you know, X months from now, it should be worth, you know, a little bit more. So there's a little bit of a gamble there. There's also a little bit of a gamble, of course, when it comes to how much it's actually going to cost to renovate something, depending upon the condition of the property. Now, you've got plenty of folks out there that are the, you know, carpet and paint king and queen of Charleston that will just buy something, do a little facelift, uh, and then turn it right around. The gains aren't as big. Then again, it does depend on how much they purchase that property for. Obviously, the ones that, you know, the, the home run opportunities are usually the ones where people are in very bad situations. They have to sell immediately. They have no other options. You're their saving grace. Or their property is so bad that even an other investor wouldn't touch it. But what a lot of people do is they, you know, they kind of dip their toe in the water. There's some easier ways to getting started rather than going and saying, all right, well, the only way for me to win as an investor in this market is just to go and buy the ugliest house I could find, <laughs> which... I mean, there's there's some fun there. I mean, I I bought a place downtown in uh, 2011, and I bought it for under a hundred grand, 
and I put about 300 grand into it. And uh, it's worth about a million bucks more than that. It was good timing. It was a good location. It's in the short-term rental overlay district. Um, so that's a, I mean, I've got a good success story there. I've got uh, several others for both myself and for, for my clients, but we've got to begin with the end in mind. We have to control the controllables. Now for these homes that are in really bad disarray, that number is going to be a little bit more fluid. That renovation budget is going to be a little bit more fluid because as you start peeling back the layers of that onion, you find issues, right? That are going to have to be dealt with. Uh, this is all based on the assumption, of course, that you have, you know, integrity and that you're not going to put a bandaid on something and sell someone a house with issues that you know about and chose not to do something about or disclose. That's a big no, no. But when you talk to real estate, whether it's buying or selling or investing, it should result in, you know, a bit of an outline, kind of like what I was saying earlier, you can go and buy a packet of information. You can go and educate yourself. But when you talk to an agent that really understands the investment world, depending upon what type of investing you want to do, that meeting, really any meeting with, a, with an agent should result in, all right, well, here's an outline. Here are the steps uh, we are going to take together. Here's the desired outcome. And here's when we should accomplish that by. Here's what you're responsible for. Here's what I'm responsible for. Here's how we're going to make this work. I'm going to go out into the market. I'm going to identify opportunities that fall within your investment parameters which we will discuss and agree upon beforehand, I will identify, analyze, and present that property to you. And you've got, especially in a market like this, a pretty short amount of time to make a decision. Because if you can't make a decision, if you can't wrap your head around the investment, that's okay. We'll get you on the next one. But these investment deals do not last long. To think that you are the only investor talking to somebody that's in a really bad situation that has to sell and is willing to sell at a deep discount in a market like this, they just don't stick around. They're unicorns. They're tough to catch. So we have to be really focused in terms of what we're looking for, how we're going to identify these properties. The analysis uh, is something that we do, wh whether we're looking at cash on cash return or your capitalization rate or your net monthly cash flow or your after tax um, cash flow or, or income, a bunch of different ways of analyzing the property. I want you to be able to, though, when you work with me or work with my team uh, and purchase investment property, because we also own a, or I also own a property management company that will protect the asset and protect the cash flow. That's, that's the role of the real estate property manager, right? Is to protect the asset and the cash flow. Uh, we're going to look at these properties. We're going to make decisions on whether we want to take a stab at it or not, but it should be kind of like red light, green light. If we look at a property and we need a desired rate of return, then it's just a simple math problem. What do we need to buy the property for in order to achieve or exceed that rate of return? Now, here's the great thing. You don't have to have 20 or 25% down. You definitely don't need to buy properties for cash. You can use private money lending. You can use other people's money. And I can get you plugged into that. I mean, I own a company that specializes in that. But what, what a lot of people will do uh, especially those that are first-time home buyers, is they'll house hack. And what I mean by that is something simple and organic. Rather than going to just buying a house or a condo or a townhouse, they'll go and they'll buy a duplex or a triplex or a quadplex. And here's what's cool. You can use the rental income to qualify for a higher purchase price. There's a little math involved there. Obviously, we'll get you in touch with a lender to really understand the purchasing power, depending upon whether you just want to buy a house, condo, or townhouse, or if you want to go and buy multifamily, but there are plenty of success stories that we have of folks that go and just buy a duplex, rent out the other side, and almost, if not all, of their monthly payment is absorbed by the rent that they receive. They get to live for free. And then, boom, they get to go and do that again and again and again. Bunch of different ways to get into real estate, but it is a, it is a contact sport, Right? Just like traditional real estate brokerage is, is a contact sport. The more people that you talk to, the more opportunities you're in front of, uh, the more you'll find, the more you'll get. You just have to be able to swing at the pitch. Um, my job is to kind of float it up like a big beach ball so that you can hit it out of the park. And, that's, and that comes from identifying the property, analyzing it, and presenting it. So if that's something you want to learn more about, you really want to explore investment real estate, whether it's buying and holding as a rental flipping. Maybe you want to be the bank as a private money lender. A uh, bunch of different ways to skin the cat, as I mentioned. Just feel free to reach out to me. Let's have a conversation about it. Let's see what sort of appetite you have for investment real estate. I can tell you all different kinds of stories, where to look, 
uh, what to expect, so on and so forth. My number is 843-400-8009. That's 843-400-8009. Or check us out online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Find Brian Beatty online at listingsincharleston.com. The Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues next on The Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Now, here's more of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA. Welcome back, folks, to the last few minutes of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show here on the Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. You know, if anything that I've said struck a chord, if you're interested in learning more about working with my team or understanding investment real estate, preparing for new construction, you're thinking of selling, you're thinking of buying, um, I will say this, if you're thinking of selling your home, we will sell your home in 30 days or less for a price that we both agree upon. And if I can't, then I'll sell it for free. So uh, we've got plenty of incentives out there to help you guys save some money or earn money, however you want to look at it. Uh, but to, the number to call or text is 843-400-8009. That's uh, how to reach me personally, 843-400-8009. Or go to our website, listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Dot com. I want to add one more element to this conversation about being an investor, and that's having a partner that can manage the property for you. I'm really excited to announce we've been working really hard on this for the past several months, and we are now live with a property management company called Beatty Management. And uh, it is a investment company built by investors for investors. Now, of course, we'll take any property that has a long-term tenant. We're not doing short-term rentals right now, but the idea is this. There are a bunch of management companies out there that frankly make their money by nickel and diming you, the owner. You know, anytime they have to send out somebody to fix something, anytime there's a service call, there's an additional fee that you have to pay that property management company. And it's it's baked in all over the place when you really read through these management agreements. So the first thing that that I want to just say really quickly is that our, our company is different. We are built to maximize and protect cash flow for your investment. So that means that we're only going to make money three ways. When we place a tenant, when we manage the property on a monthly basis, which is at a reduced rate, and if that tenant decides to stay, we get a renewal fee. That's it. If we have to get other people out to the property to manage it, to fix something, we don't take anything out of uh, your pocket in order to facilitate that. That's our job. So as an investor, what's really important when you're buying and holding something is obviously having a company uh, that will take care of your property. That means going to the property. Most, most inspect, I'm sorry, most property management companies say that they they'll do routine inspections, but they really don't. And I just, I know that because I've been selling real estate for 16 years and a lot of folks that sell had it as a rental and they're sick and tired of dealing with property management companies that drop the ball. I just had a client that's a real estate agent that lives out in Hollywood that owns investment properties here, found out that one side of his uh, duplex hadn't received rent in like 10 months. He didn't even know. Now, that's obviously kind of shame on him too for not uh, monitoring his books. But um, point is, I'm I'm excited to announce the fact that we've launched property management. We get a lot of requests for it. It's something we really haven't been able to accommodate up until now. I've got a fantastic property manager in charge with literally decades of experience. Very sharp guy. So if you're thinking of investing in real estate, if you own properties right now that you're managing and you don't want to deal with you know, toilets and calls from tenants at all hours of the day and night and weekends. And you want a professional company that can help maximize your cash flow, maximize the investment potential on that property. Then I invite you to give me a call 843-400-8009. That's 843-400-8009. Or you can go to our property management website, which is Beatty, B-E-A-T-T-Y, Management MGMT. So BeattyMGMT.com. That's BeattyMGMT.com. Or you just can reach out to me and I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. We'll have a conversation about whether you want to invest and hold and uh, secure that cash flow or if you own something right now and you just need some some help. But feel free to give me a call, 843-400-8009. That's 843-400-8009. You guys enjoy your weekend. Thanks so much for listening to the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show right here 
on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA on WTMA.com. Join us for another edition of the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show next Saturday morning at 9 and Sunday morning at 10. Contact Brian Beatty online at listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. Or call him at 843-400-8009. That's 843-400-8009.